Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Hey, well. Hi, Will. There we go. All right, we've got quite a few people on. This is fantastic. I'm really excited. How's everyone doing? How's everyone feeling? Mm -hmm. Just got a flash shower, but it's starting to look sunny. So, like, I'm finding the the weather is definitely affecting my mood. Oh, I think <laughs> around it's, now. Well, it's it's been nice and sunny for us in the in the last little while, so it's been a little bit weird. Cause we're like, let's we want to go out, but. Mm -hmm. Is this the social? Is this the responsible thing to do? I feel like maybe. Yeah. I, I, I went for a walk yesterday. Um, just you know, in my I guess it's pretty unresponsible to want wine during all of this. Um, no. But uh, <laughs> so I went for a walk, and I I've never seen so many people outside like running and biking and and walking. Like in my eyes, it's it, it is really nice, but at the same time, like oh like this is not like very good <laughs> it isn't but, good but it is good like it's just like yeah it is good right <laughs> and we have this like this is this is that unique kind of opportunity and that is if we think about and zoom in a little bit here there we go. if we think about what people are doing or what they should or shouldn't be doing um like it's baffling it's almost baffling it's like we have all of these warnings we know we shouldn't be out there we know we should be at home we know we should be like sick but consumer behavior is not always what we expect it to be. Uh, it's, it seems sometimes irrational, but it is highly predictable. Every mm -hmm. time something like this happens, we can see some trends. And whether that's, I think I mentioned this on the last call last week, but whether that's an economic, like, economic crisis like we're going through, like maybe the downturn in 2008 uh, or the dot-com last 2001, but people reliably do the same illogical things which is just crazy, which means that there's a huge opportunity here. If we can start understanding what people are doing, we can actually start getting and positioning products and positioning services into that. And that's what I want to talk about today. Mm -hmm. So uh, how's everybody else doing? How's, everyone's, how's everyone else's business feeling and, 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 and reacting? Michelle? I lost about seven grand in April and May in wedding. <laughs> People want their deposits back for June, July, and August. I'm really grateful that I've spent a lot of time working on myself before all this happened. So I'm able to roll with the punches pretty congenially. But it's definitely a financial challenge. I'm homeschooling my kids now for the next little while, which is sort of something I always wanted to do. Yeah. But it changes my form of productivity, and I have to think about what services I'm offering right now focusing a little bit more on prints and forward thinking for like 2021 taking some time to really update my website and sort of spring clean the business so to speak while the opportunity is here perfect and, and that, that's, that's something i'm going to touch on so you know what maybe let's jump into things because uh I, there's, there's a fair bit of content i want to cover and some of it actually will address this um so what i found uh, last time was there's a lot of uh uh, there we go. Um, there was um, there was a lot of value for people to actually seeing and going through a live exercise, uh, and we did as we did with uh, as we, as we did with Shauna from Passion of Blooms, and I have a couple updates on that, and, I, and I, I'm not sure if Shauna is here today or not. Uh, I don't think she is, but um, supposedly some of the ideas that we came up with worked out really really well. So, and I know that uh, Cam and Amanda were there, and they were instrumental in helping. And develop some of those ideas and they did really really well um so there's definitely opportunity and uh, opportunities to pivot there we go so um really quickly what we're going to go through just a brief introduction i'll keep it a lot shorter i think you know who we, you guys know who we are um so I'll just quickly run through some things there but then talk about the changes and the opportunities as michelle alluded to uh there's a hell of a lot of opportunity to work on our business and we're also going to get paid to do it so uh, transformational opportunity. Then we'll talk about consumer, uh, some consumer behavior, some things that are really interesting that happened, maybe a bit of a recap uh, of last time and then ideas and suggestions. Uh, any questions before we get into things? Any, uh, anything anyone wants to know uh, specifically? Perfect. All right, let's get into it then. So uh, about us, 
we're a marketing agency. We've been doing this a long time. Uh, we'll be using this video as content within uh, our website as well, uh, and and some of our social platforms. So if you want to be, uh, if you want, if, uh, maybe this is an opportunity for you guys to also update your names and make sure they show up as your business or whatever you want to show up later on. So um, it, there, there could be an opportunity to to, to market yourselves in here. But anyways, we've been doing this a long time. We're a team of, uh, of, of, of quite a few people across a couple of different offices. Uh, we focus on a ton of marketing efforts and we work with uh, almost a hundred different clients in a number of really interesting capacities. We've done, uh, we just won a Canadian uh, Business Excellence Award, which we're really proud of. Thank you. I see the clap, Rachel, I appreciate it. So a huge, this is a, as big as it gets for us. So we're really happy about that. So uh, we've got some really great momentum and some really great people. And uh, not that we're not, going through some struggles right now, which we are, but uh, I think there's, uh, uh, it's these people who have, who have really helped us get through some of the hardships right now, and uh, we're excited to continue working with them. There's a ton of stuff that we do. I'll leave the slide up for a second. Everything from strategy and consulting to actual execution. So we have experience on a lot of different fronts. Uh, and we were exposed, to, and I'm actually gonna flip back Couple slides here. Uh, there's a list of clients that we work with. One of our one of the or we don't, uh, one of the approaches that we've taken is a highly diversified um, client set, which is something I'll encourage everyone to think about going forward. Whenever one of these uh, crises shows up, we keep kind of alluding back to what what are the fundamentals of investment, for example. We talk about a diversified portfolio, but that also applies for businesses. So if you're a photographer and you're highly focused and exclusively focused on weddings, uh -oh. what happens when, right? Crash. There we go. Uh, Stuart, what, what's, what's your business exactly? Um, I'm doing quite a few things. I've, uh, lately I've been building sites, I've been building brands. Um, I've also been marketing those, those brands on Facebook and Instagram. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm honing in on the things I'm really good at and outsourcing the other stuff so that it doesn't, you know, waste my time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the last call I had, I was, I was on this like transition between like full-time job and, and staying with clients Yeah. and had this opportunity for an amazing uh, job that got postponed for just one month. And then since then, you know, I've seen four new clients, um, which, you know, so I, I feel happy, you know, Absolutely. Surprisingly, this has been a kind of a blessing and a curse. So, yeah. okay. well, that's 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 fantastic. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, I'm just going to see if I can switch this into. Um, here, let me just add this. Try to cut this out of. Uh, there we go. Let's see, there we go. Okay, now you guys should actually be able to see me and there we go. And the slides at the same time. Yes, there we go, progress. Okay, so let's, uh, let's just get into yeah. the specifics right away. So changes and opportunities. So everybody's going through the exact same changes and whether you're in Canada, the US, in the European Union, uh, in the, the Eurozone countries, uh, every government right now is motivated to keep businesses in business and they're injecting billions and trillions of dollars into the economy in the u.s uh, during the great depression the equivalent bailout package was worth about 800 billion dollars in today's dollars does anyone know what the what the bailout package value was and if you want to put it into the comments or just blurt it out uh, what the bailout package actually looked like for the states 2.2 or 2 million or 2 trillion. Two trillion. That's right. It's so yeah. over two. So this is now more than twice the size of what it was for the, the bailout package for the Great Depression in the States, uh, which every other country is now following suit, suit. And arguably, the U.S. is also lagging behind. What's available in Canada right now? Uh, there are a ton of different resources. So I've linked uh, to the uh, to the economic response plan and then the work sharing program. Uh, even to today, we actually had a 75% uh, notice on 75% wage subsidy for employers. 
So there's a huge opportunity here to take advantage of these programs to not only continue operations, but decrease our costs, continue operations and invest into, uh, into our materials, into our business and into ourselves. So that being said, um, that being said, like there is, if you understand what's happening in your market and what people are actually looking for, and I'm going to jump around a little bit here, what people are actually looking for, there we go. Um, there may be an opportunity to actually uh, be far more prescriptive or far more preemptive into which direction we're going to go. So Michelle, if you're doing wedding photography, what other kind of, what kind of other photography or business are you going to get into? I actually started a print magazine. I know that there's not, you know, a ton in print, but the margins are very good. I've been working on a fine art series behind the scenes for a really long time. Yeah. And it's time to, you know, work on selling print, selling canvases, selling postcards, the things that I was doing behind the scenes that don't involve any human interaction. It's a really good time to maximize those aspects of my business. Okay, perfect. Um, there's we're making a we're making a few kind of pivots and then Cam is going to be aware of this. Uh, we're getting into creating our own digital products, creating educational products. Imagine nice. it, it, print is one thing, uh, but that introduces potentially a lot of other challenges, especially in a COVID kind of world. How do you distribute it? How do you make sure it's secure? How do you make sure it's safe? Even if it's printed, are people going to trust it? Are people going to order it? How do you make delivery of your information from you to them as frictionless as possible and then as valuable for them and for you as possible? Good what, can point. You with, what can you do with all of that information and all of that knowledge that gives them some sort of value? Um, what I wanted to show is two different tools that we use extensively to actually get an insight into what's happening in the market. I've just pulled up uh, trends.google.com um, into and, and selected the business category. This gives you an idea of what the most popular searches are over the last 24 hours. There are a whole bunch of these kinds of tools that I think people should be looking at. Um, Cam, right before the call, sent, uh, sent us this exploding topics.com one. I think the, uh, there's a specific link for uh, the last, uh, I selected a few different, uh, uh, a few different sec sections but there are some interesting tools. Uh, from this, we found, for example, like zoom.us is trending in so many different markets. People are now looking at different, like how can we work remotely? How can we, yeah, there's sick leave, there's visual capitals. These are just the top six from this, this site. Uh, but I'd actually, there we go, go through and try to figure out uh, what things are within our sector that people are looking for. And you can look at, in, in Google Trends, you can actually look at uh, YouTube trends as well. If we're going to create content, if we're going to publish information, or if we're going to see what people are looking for, uh, those tools will give us really, really deep insight into uh, where those opportunities lie. There we go. Any questions about those tools? Because I feel like it, there's there's a ton there that we could uh, that we could discuss. I don't know about other people, but I'm kind of glazing over. Are we able to kind of do what we did last time with Shauna? Sure, absolutely. Because so, that was fun and engaging and everyone seemed kind of like to focus and collaborate. For sure. In that case, let's, let's actually, let's just do that. I, I'm, I'm not married to the content and I can easily share the slides in a, in a different way later on. So in that case, let's get into, uh, let's actually get into an example of what we want to go through. Um, so I'm just going to pull up one bit of information here from the last time we were, uh, we were together. Uh, and that is, I want, uh, I want, to, uh, I want to make sure that we understand the kinds of consumers we're going after and what their likely behavior is going to be. So uh, let's actually, maybe Michelle, maybe yours, yours is going to potentially be a really good business here. Uh, hey. Let's say you're a photographer. Let's say. And you do some really great work in the uh, in the wedding space, and now your business is uh, changing like fundamentally. Uh, 
where so let's put the print piece aside right now where else um where else do you think there's opportunity for you oh man well i double in the mental health landscape too i'm working with canadian mental health association right now and developing a therapeutic photography program to help people with mental health issues and i would say that aspect of how i blend art and social involvement is something that could be really burgeoning right now there's a lot of anxiety going around there's a lot of doubt i would say that right now the need for therapeutic resources is probably higher than the demand for wedding photography so i can kind of zigzag into that aspect of my business what i try to sell from a fine art perspective is very specifically hope my entire mandate is to go out there and give people a sense of hope. So I'm working on a fundraiser right now at the Rotary Center of the Arts. Like I mentioned, the, what's the word? I keep forgetting the word, the margins on my print products are very yeah. good. So it's a really good time to be maximizing that aspect of the work. Okay. So uh, there's, you identified like therapeutic resources and, and, and um, Think about what people are right now most concerned about. What market you're going after in that in, in that sense? Like, who is if you're coming up with these resources, who's most likely to be the client for you? Anyone who's experiencing anxiety right now. Maybe better still, who's actually doing making the purchase in this case? Um, people who have enough disposable income to do so, people who still appreciate the product of print photography. I find my wedding market is around 26 years old. My print market is more like 40 to 60 years old. People who just kind of have a different relationship with print and have the money to invest in it. The, if we talk about the, um, the therapeutic resources, like for people who typically rely on therapy, who is it that's actually making the purchase? Is it they themselves or is it a counselor? Is it a program that they're a part of? Is it, is it something like, where are they getting aid for these things from? It's mostly people like realtors, art collectors, people who've worked in social services, people who are semi-retired, people who kind of understand what my purpose is, what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to support the mental health community on a larger level with inspiration, people in the clinics, people in the hospital, nurses, counselors, just thinking back to the people who've actually purchased my art. What do you think is going to happen in the in the coming days and weeks as everybody is getting hit, like especially kind of the older demographics, their investments, their retirement funds are getting hit potentially fully, like like essentially their their, their retirement funds are getting destroyed. Uh, where what do you think what do you think is going to happen to to your market for those you know, those those kind of discretionary print products? That's a reality. And I'm sort of timing things to come out when a lot of the government resources are going to come out and yeah. people are going to feel a little bit more comfortable. So I'm basically planning to release everything April 15th and then again, April 30th, the yeah. time where I've sort of projected that the emergency funding is going to come out. Yeah. And after people not having any income for weeks yeah. or a month, they're going to have some extra money to spend. And the hope is that they're going to spend it on something that's going to help them uplift their mood and make them feel better about what's going on around them. So if, you're, if your goal is to help people in these, these trying times in their lives, yeah. Uh, uh, Rachel actually suggested something. She said that mental health, uh, mental health care is going to experience a high demand from this experience. For sure. So what's the best way? Let's say, let's finish off your print product. Let's finish off your, like, how can we take this and now deliver it for consumption or potentially for purchase uh, in as many different platforms as possible? And I'd love for Amanda, Cam, uh, Stuart, anybody else to come up with some suggestions and say, look, if we're thinking about someone who's going through this, uh, what's the best place to put out this information or what's the best way that we can get people to actually consume it? Amanda, please go ahead. Okay, I have one, um, and actually, I feel like it would almost work. Um, 
So what if, this is actually something that my mom and I kind of are doing in Enderby. So my mom um, works for like, doesn't work for the city of Enderby. She ran for something like, not for mayor, she ran for chair in Enderby, but she's really heavy, heavily involved in the community. So what she actually did, and now they're at the print stage, is she did a photo contest online on Facebook. Um, and she encouraged everybody to submit like, some of their favorite photos of the Enderby area and stuff like that. And then they went through this whole kind of voting phase, which basically kept the community really, really um, engaged in the whole thing. Um, in the end, they came out with 12 photos. She made a calendar and got it printed. Um, whoever bought the calendar, um, profits went towards the charity. In this case, it was towards the um, food bank, but maybe that's something to put towards the CMHA. Um, I don't know, it's just an idea, but. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll show you guys how far I've come with this. Check out, this is my postcards and they're lovely. And so there's prints up at Foundry. I'm hoping to see prints, you know, at the hospital. We're doing an art show. I'm part of the art walk in September and I'm paired with CMHA. So they're like a supporter and they do what they can to promote it as well, which is really nice. And like, even with uh, your postcards too, if you want, like maybe doing something where, um, I don't know, like if somebody feels like they want to send just a little card or a little something to somebody who they think could use it, you know, sell your postcards that way, include the, the postage stamp, which is like 60 something cents or something, and then send it. And I don't know, I'd buy postcards for like everybody just to be like, yeah, to see you. Really cute. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's exactly the idea, and that's a really good way to sell it to say, yeah. you know, uplift somebody's day with a postcard. Yeah, because especially right now, I feel like you know, especially those people who are feeling alone. Like I have a friend, and she's she lost her daughter two years ago. She's very very alone right now. She's in self quarantine, and I talk to her all the time because you know you want them to feel like like you're there. So maybe that's kind of something nice. And yeah. There's uh, funds that go from this series back to Foundry. So mm -hmm. it like, supports them back 18% of every sale of a postcard or a canvas actually goes back to supporting the workers in mental health and developing programs because most of these programs are still community funded. So mm -hmm. you know, they're going through their own economic upturn as well. And it's a way to support everybody together. What I'd really like to see is these print products in the store. I'd like to see them in functional downtown. I'd like to see them in whatever store settings I could get them into. Mm -hmm. so, so I'll, I'll push you right now, just as far as like, we focus on some things that like, like I want it to be in a store. Um, and we don't know whether this like social, like social distance, these social distancing measures are going to go on for a month or four months. Right. Um, so I think it would be most useful to prioritize, like let's make a list of potential options and opportunities and then prioritize and say, Hey, look, um, you know, maybe in a, maybe have a parking lot of ideas for after all of those measures get lifted, uh, let's go in there. Good but, right now, but right now, like if we incur costs to print off these products and they end up sitting on a shelf for weeks or months with no one actually interfacing with them, is that a, you know, is that a really good use of your time or, or your funds? No. And luckily I have them mostly to order right now, but you're right. Any store that they go into, they're going to have to be pre-printed. So that's not the best use of my resources. So I, I demand, I really like your suggestion of like doing some sort of, um, some sort of community campaign, but think about, think about what people are going to remember after all of this mm -hmm. is done, which companies are we going to remember? It'll likely yeah. be the ones that have done great things for the community and help support the community in this dire time of need. Mm -hmm. So we can be top of mind in one way, but then how can we leverage some of these uh, efforts to build a database, to build uh, a pool of contacts, to build a community that mm -hmm. is on board with your, uh, with your cause or with you, because then they'll end up doing advocating uh, on your behalf. So with that said, how can we run some of these campaigns or help Michelle kind of think about these campaigns in a way that uh, gets her to build this database? Yeah. So I think Amanda's suggestion, and maybe I'll be a little more prescriptive, Amanda's suggestion of like using social media, creating some sort of page or creating some sort of 
um, some sort of cause um, or using Twitter or Instagram to create a, a, a hashtag that helps you track everybody who's within it because then afterwards you can actually communicate with those people. Right. I think um, you're right, Will. And there's, there's something to be said. So a, a friend of mine, uh, Ram Castillo, he's a, he's a public speaker and, and a designer from Australia. Mm -hmm. He started like a, a COVID uh, Facebook group. So it was an area where everyone can get together and have, have like like-minded ideas. If you have an idea already, it could be a place that you can gather people that also want to support that cause into a Facebook group or into some kind of uh, email newsletter that you that you keep them updated on on the progress of things. So then you have them within a community, whether newsletter or Facebook, that you can reach out to them instead of everyone being separate. It kind of brings them together. together. And I think community aspect is going to be really huge for businesses during this time and afterwards, because that's the way that you're going to connect with people through different social platforms. Absolutely. Um, as we're doing the Zoom call, and as we're doing like so many more live events, social media events, uh, webinars, uh, there could potentially even be an opportunity for you, Michelle, to run some sort of events like this that discuss this, or maybe take questions, or get insight into people's uh, people's unique needs. I love it. I have a leadership bug that's starting to show, so I can see that for sure. Leading a group, leading a discussion. There's a lot of people I've noticed doing what I'm doing now, which that happens with a great idea. Using photography to uplift, using photography to build community, using photography for fundraisers. So the more people I can bring together that are trying to meet the same goals, the better. Absolutely. Uh, you're so, I, I, liked, I liked your idea of sending hope and sending like that you can turn this into uh, email newsletter information, like receive hope and inspiration in your inbox every day. Cool. Sign like up that. for something like this, right? Uh, yeah. Or share this with a friend and you know, here is your additional incentive or here is uh, you're going to be listed as someone who truly believes that mental health is an issue that we need to that we need to deal with in this difficult time. Even maybe something as simple as buy a postcard for yourself, get one for a friend. Absolutely. Yeah. Or you can buy that you can maybe maybe there's there's an opportunity to, to build this digital database of of of, uh, uh, of customers. Like here is an email newsletter which you can maybe even send out for free. But if you want a printed version to arrive at a friend's house, give people the option to buy that afterwards and send it directly to their address. There's an event coming up too at the Rotary Center for Perfect. the Arts in September. It's going to be a fashion show with all kinds of performers. So it's a really good idea to be promoting that. To be, I don't know if it's a good time to sell tickets, but to promote at least. Sure. This will be this will be like a an in, an in person event. Yes. It'll With be a fashion canceled. show and a concert and everything. It won't. It won't, it won't unless it uh, if it's unless it's happening at least a month or two later. It will not be happening. It will likely get canceled. Uh, We're booked for September twenty fourth, and I don't want to be blindly optimistic. So I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Um, the, everything that we're hearing right now is not to paint doom and gloom. It's um, we're going. They're going to be discouraging public events for probably yeah four to twelve months. Wow. So, um, so much so, and, and like, I'm pulling some you know, some numbers that I've heard. Uh, that's a constantly sh uh, shifting landscape. I know uh, the universities have uh, have canceled or delayed uh, graduation and convocation ceremonies in uh, May. Wow. Uh, and, and no one is scheduling anything for the summer yet, and anything that's that's potentially getting scheduled is getting canceled. So. Insight. The, the other part, even the Olympics, which were supposed to start in August, are getting postponed to 2021. So I, I, to be honest, as far as like, where would I spend my effort building like physical community things or digital community things? Uh, yeah. What I wanted to also uh, show off next is um, there are, there we go, I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, there is, uh, there are four types of consumers that I'll just quickly talk about. Uh, one is the slam. The, so these, these are the slam on the brakes. I'll give you guys a bit of a, a rundown of who they are. Slam on the brakes. So these are people who see an emergency and pull back on absolutely everything. 
pull back spending, pull back uh, um, any relationships, any tools, just full sign on the brakes. The second one is we're feeling the pain, but we're gonna try to persevere. We're gonna try to last as long as possible. And you'll likely see businesses right now apply, like there's the in immediately panicked ones where like, okay, we're gonna lay people off, but the other ones are like, okay, let's try to go for as long as we can. Uh, the next one is comfortably well off. There are consumers that you're gonna interface with that actually have enough budget and enough funding that whatever happens, they're mostly going to be, uh, they're mostly going to be fine. And they're independent. So their changes, they're, they're like, they'll roll with the punches, uh, but they'll still get married. They'll still make significant purchases. Uh, they're still going to make these kinds of large capital investments. But, doctors. One more time, sorry? Doctors. Doctors, potentially. Um, but, and this is just kind of going back to thinking about different kinds of products or services. So we can focus on here are the postcards, here is the mental health initiative, but don't lose sight of your wedding business. Uh, there are people who are still going to want to have somewhat of a ceremony that's going to get documented. If they're not relying on funding from their guests, or if they're, they're well-to-do, they're still going to want to have an extravagant, but probably, well, very much reduced uh, ceremony. How do you position yourself in front of them and let them know that you're still available for these kinds of bookings? Because I think there's an opportunity there. You're going to potentially see a lot of your brides cancel, but some may not, and some will try to find an opportunity. And so you may actually want to even be prescriptive or suggestive as to what they can be doing to continue to have their ceremony. That's a good idea. Uh, and the last one, I'm just going to flip, flip, flip back here. The last one is the live for today category of consumers. This is just the bottom. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see my mouse. Uh, kind of. There it is. So live for today people. These are the people who actually, whatever happens, they will continue to indulge. They will continue to make purchases. Uh, they're not concerned about what's happening to their credit. They're not concerned about what's happening in the world. They're just like, this is a treat. This is the thing I want. So think about the different kinds of services you have and how they appeal to different kinds of consumers. I was actually telling the group right before you came, I got an inquiry this morning, first one in a few weeks, which was nice. It was for a couple shoot, but they wanted to go out and do a photo shoot like next week or the week after. And yep. it's really kind of questionable from a social distancing point of view, but it is very much that live for today aspect. They don't seem to care and they want to give me their money. So I'm thinking about what to do. So let's put this one up because I think this is a fantastic example. So um, what do you guys think? How can she, how can she potentially take on a shoot like this and not be, uh, not be ostracized by the community or, or not, not have subjects who are really worried about their health? Oops, I, I didn't mean to send that privately, Amanda. I, I just said guidelines in the chat, just like social guidelines for when you guys meet. Um, tell them, you know, I'm going to use a zoom lens or a, <laughs> like something, something to where you're not interacting with them physically. The um, same six feet of distancing that they require at the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Like you can still take photos from afar, like scenery photos with like a nice backdrop of some sort. And like, you're kind of lucky with that way. Cause you, it's, able to be done and then yeah provide guidelines that say like you know keep these photos to yourself or something for a minimum of whatever i i don't know okay i got one i got one what about what about rebranding yourself as the social distancing photographer in cologne <laughs> <laughs> i love that that's great like actually making your title that like that is now my new role i love it the social distance photographer I have all kinds of ideas for photo shoots through people's windows. It doesn't necessarily have oh, to be people's windows, right? <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm trying to push you guys to think about. This is what I'm trying to push you guys to think about because it doesn't just have to be through windows. It can actually be like, as long as you're 
six feet away from someone, as long as you're and they're protected in some way, and whether that's through a window or even just being far enough and using, you know, the 85 mil lens instead of the 50 mil lens. Totally. Right. So there's a huge, I think there's a huge opportunity to like not only do it, but then also deliver on this promise in a way that communicates to their audience that this is done by the socially distancing res uh, responsible photographer. Yes. Like the only way to do couple shoots and wedding shoots right now is this way. And I'm uniquely prepared to do it. And here's why. Perfect. I think that'd be awesome to just have that as like, not only like a leading paragraph on your website, but a whole page um, denoted to the different safety precautions you're taking into account, the different ways that you're doing this, really descriptively laid out so people know that you're not just trying to capitalize on this, you've actually thought it through and why this actually makes sense for your profession. And like Will said, why you're uniquely capable of doing all this and still following all the rules and even pushing it more so. So it's, I'm not gonna be six feet away from you, I'm actually gonna be 20 feet away from you and this is the lens I'm gonna use and this is the outdoor space we're gonna be taking photos so that we stay far enough away from each other and, and that there is none of those concerns that, that people will have, whether it's your clients or the people that are seeing you doing this in the community. Good idea, I read somewhere that people want clear expectations right now on what businesses are doing. So updating the website to say, you know, yes, we're still taking clients, but under these particular precautions and circumstances, and I like being known as socially responsible. It's something that's important to me. So now's a good time to highlight that. For sure. So, um, can, I, can I say something real quick, Will? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Um, just before we move on, I, I would add on to that is not only do you want to have very clear communication around that, but you actually have a story that says, hey, <laughs> I didn't expect to get an inquiry, but I did. This couple wanted an engagement shoot. It got me thinking, how can I help them get their engagement photos and do it responsibly? And I came up with this. These are all the precautions I'm taking. So it's like, you didn't just think of this to capitalize and serve yourself. You thought of this so that you could keep helping people. Absolutely. And if you make that clear, um, it will really kind of just tie it all back around. Perfect. Absolutely. Uh, there's, a, there's an example that I'd like to share. And I, I love what you said, uh, lead with, Cam said to lead with story, but your, your idea of like making this. Uh, I'll, I'll ask you guys a question. And for those who've heard me ask this question uh, before, please don't answer. But um, who here, just maybe show of hands or just type, type out yes in the comments. Uh, who can name three uh, three characters from the show Friends? Doesn't matter if you, if you think you can name three characters from the show Friends. Perfect. Okay, we all can. Now, of you, who can now uh, tell me the day that uh, World War II started? It would be intuitive, and we'd think that the, one of the most important historical dates in history would be the thing we'd remember, not characters from a fictional show, right? But we're story-driven animals. And I think that, that to me is always illustrated that, that, that we, remember, we remember stories, not facts. So I think if we can actually like pivot this into, hey, here's what we did. Here's, the, here's how we help these people document their special moment in this time of crisis. Here's how we helped these people uh, find, like, find love in this really difficult time. Here's what we did to make sure that they're safe and we're safe and we can continue to help the community. Right? So just thinking about it from, and, and like, here's the story and here's how, here's what we did. Um, the other, like, Michelle, you're comfortable in front of video and, and you do really well. And, and like, think about how much we read versus how we consume additional content through watching videos, watching Instagram, watching lives. If you could pair this content, like here's the information that we're going to have on the homepage of our website, which is going to convince people that yes, we can book, you can book with us. But then here is a, an actual video explanation of what we do and why you should care. That could potentially lead to like a very much deeper understanding and better memory of, of who, you, who you are and what service you provide. That's a really good idea and I have some inquiries for you guys right now through highlight for some website updates while things are slow and 
I'm thinking about how to maximize exposure that way. It's a really good time for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this may also be, and this is, uh, think about, so I'm going to just sort of flip back to, uh, to the different kinds of consumers. Think about all of the, like, the photography that you do. Is this a good time to potentially go after consumers that are in the comfortably well off or live for today consumers who, and what the, the other scale of this, of this is, uh, this is the risk of downturn and what actually gets cut and what doesn't get cut. What you're going to see here is that things that are essentials, and by essentials, I mean, let me just see if I've got, uh, there we go. Here, here's, if, if we can pivot our products in the minds of our potential customers into being something that they need as opposed to something that they can postpone or something they can fully make do without, how can you position, reposition your service into this necessity? Can you? Uh, I could be really helpful for my clients right now who are still trying to decide whether they want to go ahead with their 2019 wedding later in the year or in September by offering some positive solutions. Like, have you considered downsizing the scale of your wedding? Some people really want to get married when they plan to for very personal reasons. And I could probably be very helpful right now in encouraging them to just restructure their day, both so that I still get paid and so that they're able to fulfill their dreams that are on that timeline for a reason. Think about, they, there, there's a differentiation here because you're potentially, um, Cam just messaged something, uh, give me a little tiny group. Uh, what, what you run the risk of doing as you're describing it like, are you, can you potentially change someone's mind on getting married or on having a wedding? I don't think I would take the agency to, I don't think it's my place to, but a lot of them are asking me questions right now, like what should I do? And I'm trying to base my suggestions on being socially responsible, but at some point maybe looking out for my own ass too. Well, but, but how can you take what, your business is and what your service is and pivot from this nice to have expendable expendable component of their wedding and how can you reposition it in their minds into oh yeah this is definitely the thing i need in this time i think especially focusing on smaller weddings people who don't want to change their date for personal reasons Right. I've seen other cases where there's a photographer and just two people or just four people and making it a really intimate experience in a way to share because if nobody else is present, then the photographer is the one who's distributing the memories, so to speak. And I think in that is in, in part of what you just said, there's a lot of value to, to documenting and sharing that, that, that intimate story. So for the rest of the group, if we were to say, okay, here's a wedding photographer versus here's a way to share your love with those who can't attend and, and let them be a part of the experience in the best way possible, which one are you more or less likely to cut? Right? So just, it, it's, it's almost like it's, it's, it's this, minor repositioning of this of a service for being a like a utilitarian service provider we take photos into we help your family experience your most special moment when they can or we help maybe your most senior maybe this is this is potentially a part of your, your service offering now is sharing photos in a way that uh, mo maybe the more senior family members can easily see them like We'll post your photos on Facebook for you or create a YouTube album that will play all of your photos next to music. Uh, your senior family members won't be able to attend, but this is as good as it gets. Oh, I'm taking I like the, oh sorry. I no. like the idea of um, replacing this memory of COVID with a memory of these amazing photos. Like we don't want to look back on 2020 and think, wow, this was 
just awful in every way <laughs> versus like I want to look back at my wedding and and think you know I have these amazing photos now and or these amazing memories were captured so just maybe shifting the focus from from the negative yeah. okay how about this uh, just as you said that hold on uh, uh hold on I'll, I'll type it into the comments because I'm not sure if it's uh but I, I really love where you're going with this. Like rather than focusing on here's the biggest thing for 2020, she hears the most positive things. So the, as I started writing this out, I'm like, uh, just said, uh, replace the memories of something tragic to something magic. Like, just, take it, just taking it from like making it this like, yeah, exactly. Like this potentially terrible event into this like truly amazing and magical moment. A true psychological reframe. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, there we go. All right, I see some some head nods, which is good. Um, there is. I, I don't want to take up too much of, uh, of of your days. You guys have been absolutely fantastic, and um, I, I I'd love to. Are there any other questions that we can answer? We're going to do these every week, and um, and I'd love for you guys to invite other people to come join next time. We'll talk about either additional programs or additional tactics um, or potentially help one specific uh, business or a couple of businesses pivot into some, uh, some new strategies. Are there any other questions anyone has or any other suggestions for, for Michelle? I'd love to uh, see what other information you had in your slides, if that's possible. Um, I don't know what your plan is for that, but if you're willing to share, I would definitely be interested. Uh, sure. There's a, uh, a lot of it requires context, but uh, hmm. you know what? What I'll what I'll do is I'll every every week that we go on, I'll add and release more of those uh, those slides and make sure that they have more information uh, with them. So I can share the slides we went through today with a few additional ones, uh, mm -hmm. but then I, I will also go into a heck of a lot more uh, in the in next Monday. Sounds good. Hey, Will, maybe just post a PDF of it into um, into the Facebook event. Yeah, for sure. Can go have a look at it. Perfect. Post to Facebook event. Got it. Okay, I'll send. Uh, did everybody find this uh, this chat through the Facebook group? Through the Facebook events? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Rachel, was that where you found it as well? Yep. Perfect. Uh, one, one suggestion there. Um, I think you guys did like four events in one. Yeah. Um, the Zoom link right right above it, it says this is a Zoom link for March 23rd, I think. Um, oh. It's just a bit of confusion. Um, could just be like, this is the same link for all five or something. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I'll take little, that right away. Little thing. No, that's that's really good feedback. Thank you. Update uh, Facebook description. Okay. In that case, uh, Rachel, I'll, I'll post the slides, a PDF, maybe a link to the PDF directly from, uh, uh, from the Facebook event. That yeah. sounds great. Thank you. If you guys have a, an issue um, and you guys are really stressing out in the week, bring your issue to the table, even in the in the event, so we know to talk about it. And Will has some time to prepare, and then we can focus on a strategy for you. Absolutely. Sweet. Perfect. Okay, thank you everyone for, for joining. Um, really appreciate all of the all of the, the suggestions and ideas you guys have shared. Uh, we will steal some of them for our clients as well. So uh, yeah, we appreciate everyone uh, coming in, joining, participating, and uh, yeah, we look forward to hopefully seeing all of you and, and many more next Monday.